Go ahead. Give them a minute. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for coming to our webinar for Certified Vehicle Sales. Are you leaving money on the table? I know Noah Moore will be joining us shortly as time comes on, but let me at least start and give the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sean Chapel, and I am a Senior Strategy Manager here at Pure Cars. Work with a number of different clients, both from 15 rooftops to as high as up to 40. And I have a lot of experience here, close to two years now. And then beyond that with Pure Cars, almost uh, five years at Cox Automotive and all in the marketing space. Um, and a lot of information and time that I have spent and watched through the years in the digital landscaping and the changes that have gone on, both internally and externally, in the automotive vertical. And a lot of what has happened and being on the forefront of that. And being able to share those ideas and work with my clients and want to have the opportunity today to kind of give back a lot of what I'm seeing on the horizon, as well as things to take away for today that you can use immediately, as well as some answers that we have at Pure Cars for this particular topic. Um, so the agenda for that place through is going to, we're going to look at the 2019 market. It's something that we can't avoid. Um, we do need to get a picture of where it is that we're stepping into. And then we're going to take a look at Generation Z. I'll break that down, understand why it's part of the presentation in the CPO and really for what money is left on the table. And then, of course, in full flesh, breaking it down. So we're going to be able to go through step by step and look at the applications, the takeaways, and then we'll have a follow up at the end. But I wanted to get you a feel for how this is going to look. So the 2019 market is a market that was being talked about very heavily on the 2018, the end of the year, last year quarter. Um, some quotes just to see as prices on new vehicles and higher, uh, including the possibility of the interest rates. And then, um, you know, it's only going up. In fact, it's, it's actually been one of the largest gaps that we've ever seen currently as passed in Q3 of 2018. Uh, that's widening even further, even today. With average new models above 37,000, we have uh, used car payments that are also $149 lower. So if you can just take a moment and we can just take off the dealership hat, and just from a perspective and put on the customer's hat, like that's $149. That's a large difference in gap and consideration when you think about their budgets and how they live day to day, single, couples, families, it's, it's all the same. And so that's a strong atmosphere that we're coming into. Uh, and something that I think everyone's feeling. Um, and the truth is too, so a little bit of good news is that the interest rates are still uh, staying steady that we've seen, which is a big piece for the economical side, uh, but it's still uncertain. And this is actually from 2019 Q1 data from our um, Patrick Manzi NADA, our senior economist. And so we see some large players in the field that are actually green that have gone up, but also some that are large players and have gone down in both their sales and market share year over year. Um, so what does it mean? It means it's, it's still pretty uncertain. It's very, and it's still pretty uncertain, um, you know, despite the lack and the fear of the, rising of the rising interest rates, you know, so there's a lot of questions. I get it. It looks like new is, is struggling or there's an opportunity to be stagnant. Um, so why are we bringing up from the, the CPO perspective? Um, well, that's where we're going to have to turn to in order to help continue for the growing of the vehicle sales through this market climate. There's just one thing that the NADA of last year in 2018 was promoting so heavily was that 65% of our shoppers, they're unaware of the certified program, 65%. So we're still high level. That's a large majority of, co of consumers potential buyers that are just not aware of what it is that makes a car pre-owned versus certified pre-owned. So I have a question. How are you currently making potential used buyers aware of CPO benefits? Because if it's on the website, you say, Sean, well, I have a certain page that's somewhere, I don't know exactly where it is, but I was told that content was created and it explains the program out, then we're missing the mark because it's not gonna be on the website where they make the change an aha moment into what it is to go into a certified pre-owned car. 
And there's a lot of statistics that come around this, some that you'll see on the screen. First and foremost, in a world of ever dwindling brand loyalty, there's actually a higher level of same nameplate loyalties. You can see 35% as of recent as Q3 of 2018 trading in for the same nameplate on certified buyers versus 30% on non-CPO buyers. So right there is a lifetime customer value increase, which you might want to know why that has such a huge impact. Well, 2.6 million CPO sales in 2017, according to Automotive News Data Center, this has risen by 2.2% of total CPO sales, especially fueled by off-lease vehicles. This is by JD Power, which regularly conducts these surveys and this is as recent as the start of 2019. So they're only growing on top of the fact that it's bu building a lot of loyalty. Here's another amazing statistic just to go through. Close to 70% of these CPO buyers are reporting that they will spend a thousand or more dollars gladly for the type of premium and value that they get out of a certified pre-owned car. And even more to this is that half reported that the warranty that are on these vehicles are the main reason why they ended up responding or moving to a certified pre-owned car. So that's getting to service center, that's getting to F&I and possible products, that's getting to different parts of profit centers that are actually inside your dealership. So you might be asking, I get it, I understand, there's OEM programs, I'm reimbursed, for certified keywords, I'm reimbursed for certified actions. The OEM appears to be on the same page with me, so where is the money that I'm leaving on the table? And that's where I come into and where we get to speak on for Generation Z. So Generation Z is a massive force that back in 2015 actually made up 25% of our actual buyers right, or actual pop population, I should say, excuse me. Um, and so that was in 2015. So let's push ahead just a little bit more. So this is an emerging class of generation that is either about to get their driver's license or at the latest, they're about to graduate college. And there is some pretty formidable things that we do know about, right? We've had the baby boomers, we've talked about Gen X, we've gone into Gen Y, which is millennial. But Gen Z is very specific in the environment that they've grown up with. And we're going to break, we're going to go through this so that we can really get a feel for just what's shaped this culture around this generation. So let me just put up a few items. The Great Recession of 07, 137,000 jobs vanish. Climate change, mass shootings, declining middle class, global terrorism, massive student debt, from millennials. These are just a few items that have really shaped this generation and how they've grown up. And then of course, how that affects their buying habits and some of the ways that they consume and ultimately interact with buyers and being digital natives. And they really desire uniqueness. They really want to be able to stand out. They care heavily about the product and the product itself, right? So let's go into well, that's true, and I'm glad I know more about Generation Z, but why should it be so impactful that I need to see it as money left on the table? It's because they have vast purchase power, but they're very cautious spenders. They have 200 billion annual spending power when factoring influence on parental or household purchases. And don't worry, I got a great story for that one, just in case you're curious what they mean by parental or household purchases. But the staggering stat to the right is 57% prefer to save their money instead of spending it. Now, I told you a number of different things that they grew up in, so that shouldn't be surprising. Seeing millennials come out of school with a debt that they hold and they want to save their money in order to put themselves, they want practicality. They are wanting that idea of uniqueness, right? So here's just a few other pretty amazing items if I haven't caught your attention yet, they're comprising 40% of all custom, all consumers by 2020. That's 2.5 billion globally. Gen Z makes up the largest generation in history, right? And it's one fourth of the population that we talked about and how many billions in spending potential they actually have, right? They are not easily fooled. 
They are quick to spot misdirection and marketing speak. They are looking for everything, including brands, to be transparent and authentic. Where we used to hang out in public spaces to now a generation that prefers to hang out together online. They are device natives. Here's some shocking stats. Most teens are spending about five hours a day across multiple apps and services with watching videos being the most popular activity at 70%. Other activities are browsing social media sites, streaming music, and using a messaging app. So popular is watching video that the average teen will consume up to 68 videos per day across these platforms. So where is that power? So how, how do we get to that type of power and get to these Generation Z and how, and how they shop? Well, I mean, clearly off the bat, just from the PowerPoint slide itself, it's internet at the top. That includes the social media, the items that I just spoke on, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, search, all these areas, and then friends and family, word of mouth, right? People and their suggestions and feedback. It's really not going to be in more of a print or TV. That's not where they're going to get that research. Like 45% of teens now say they are online almost constantly, which is 20% higher than teens surveyed just three years ago. We've got to get ahead of this. Many times with my clients, they always are looking for the next thing that's going to give them the edge and what is it that's going to set me apart from my competition. And it never really comes back to this conversation of just how fast everything is moving to the digital space. And even beyond that, with like YouTube, Gen Z watching twice as many videos on mobile than any other demographic, 70% watch two hours of YouTube per day. Two hours of YouTube per day. Now that's, that is a shocking amount of time. So they are seeing where they are replacing other forms where they normally would spend their times, Generation Y, Generation X, that's still a shift, that's still a target, but this is money where we don't appropriately adjust our marketing wallet for this type of uh, percentage of buyers that, like we said, by 2020 are gonna represent 40% of who it is that's consuming and purchasing your vehicles. And 51, so even continuing, and again, Pew Research, 51% of US teens report using Facebook, notably, it says lower in the usage numbers, but for YouTube and Instagram at 72% and Snapchat at 69%. So just, again, creating more context and understanding around how they're interacting socially and just where it is on a marketing level that we have to be ahead of and some answers that we have at Pure Cars, but really where you are now and how much of that marketing wallet is currently invested in digital because that's where even uh, for this generation, it's going to primarily be. I mean, there is... Those are staggeringly high numbers. And, and most of all, and more importantly, Gen Z likes, 62% of Gen Z likes ads that provide value. Value, meaning like you have to think of it almost as yourself. We you know, take Amazon. When you go onto a site that provides so much information, so much relative uh, items that allow you to make a purchase decision and reduces friction, and gets you that much closer to a purchase, that's, that's value that you want built. And certified pre-owned is that word all inclusive completely. We also have a solution for that too, but I'm gonna leave that with you at the end of this webinar. So, but we need to go ahead and take a further step forward. So we know how the generation shops, right? But we need to break that down. So how you can take and understand Generation Z and then move it into action. That's what we're here at Pure Cars. That's what we care about is um, insights, not just numbers. So let's look at it. We have the broken context, behavior, and consumption, right? So digital micro moments and influence. This is something that you've probably heard time and time again. It's a broken record. It's micro moments. Google has broken this down. Am I getting a deal? Where should I buy from? These are questions that are being answered, and they are primarily on mobile mobile first, mobile anything. Make sure that is at the top of your mind. Their, their behaviors, behaviors when they're on your website, they're in your digital showroom. They are realistic on what they can and what they cannot afford. Call back to that widening gap between new cars 
as well, and then to use vehicles. That's a widening gap. They're realistic on what they can afford and cannot afford. And then consumption. We talked about this. Unique, right? Unique wants and needs. Those can be obtained through certified vehicles, right? That's a unique vehicle. It's to them. It's not just one more pick, pick the color, swipe left or right. I mean, this is seriously like specific to it and it has its own history. And they're finding that base models are more placed into these vehicles and so not on top of that and it makes sense it's practical i can get a 2016 same model same type of trim and then ultimately come back at a lower price point that is both backed by warranty and also allows me to enjoy all the digital native items that i have as generation z so I'm go just a little further One moment, my screen locked up for a second. Go back. Okay, I think we're back. Let me be sure. So digital ideas for Generation Z, all right? This would be also too, I can tie in my story, which I'm incredibly happy to have. So we have the time to kind of rethink media buy and how we're leveraging the dollars that we're spending, right? So knowing that where we know now, Oh, it looks like my computer was trying to attack me with cookies, which is completely understandable because I love them. But back on topic for digital ideas for Gen Z, apologize about that. Um, anything with technology, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, right? But seriously, um, so we already know, sure, back to it. Social is that word of mouth. We saw that for friends and family, and I see that that's a huge a huge area where that digital space is representative of an, of an investment in Facebook and Instagram and that influence of where it needs to be. We know heavily on how we can be invested in YouTube and why, because video consumption has never been higher. Two hours a day on average, we looked at those numbers. YouTube reaches more people in the US on mobile alone than any TV network. Just let that, let that sit in for a second. That's that's a huge proclamation. Video consumption has never been higher. YouTube reaches more people in the US on mobile alone than any TV network. I mean, that is, that is staggering. And as you can see, and this is appropriate place for this slide, we talked about the household income and the potential connection that we have here. Um, you know, on top of the, the Facebook and, and the YouTube, there is audiences. We have those abilities, you should have those abilities to put them into demographics and using and leveraging display networks for special financing, ways to group audiences, target with certified financing options, ways to get the right message at the right time, which is a lot about that context for micro moments and why that's important for where I, you know, where should I buy, am I getting a deal? Those are the type of questions that they're looking to have answered when they are communicating back and forth. And Generation Z does expect, and hopefully you do have a very easy social platform when it comes to messaging, because they do expect their brands to interact with them back and forth without friction, without time delay, when they have questions and they want to send it to you and they're going to do it in a social generation. So are you reaching Gen Z shoppers online? And if you are, are you educating them on the CPO or the overall car buying process? So this is a good spot just because of the picture to be able to tell a little story I just had. My brother was recently involved in an accident and he was given a flat check for uh, his car because it was total. And the beautiful thing about this story was is he was telling it to me on a Saturday afternoon, sitting down, talking about cars. He actually told me that it wasn't even involving him. He had struck his deal, and of course he bought a certified pre-owned 2016 Acura TLX full technology package. Um, he just started telling me why, because it made sense, and he had the warranty and the extended options, and that was part of his uh, purchasing decision. <clears throat> Nothing new there. But what was really intriguing is that he noticed in the showroom another individual couple 
he said it couldn't be older than 18, maybe 19, <clears throat> that came onto the floor with their phone going back and forth with the salesman and then literally going in and out of the TLX, looking at the same technology package, uh, speaking to and fro of all the different options, and, and it looked like that was going to be the one that purchased the car, only to at the very last minute turn away and see two elderly, an elderly couple, which he could only imagine as their parents, walk up to the sales individual, and they go into the back, and he said later while he was getting his car detailed as it was coming out, watch that couple without the other two parents drive away in the car, or a variation of it, that was on that showroom. So that's what I mean when I say when they bring in $200 billion of household purchase power when you consider who's attached to these children. In fact, it's, it's, it's only getting more influential with the way that they find these brands and then they go and say, this is the product that I want. So that's all through Generation Z. That's the money that's on the table, that if we don't go through and attack these items and have marketing strategies in place, to be in front of 40% of what is going to be the consumers of your inventory, then we're just, we're leaving it on the table because we're gonna be behind again. And that's not where we wanna be. When we had to catch up to the way millennials crave convenience, only to have that happen again as we're coming on to the next generation. And there's ways for us to go ahead and start doing this now. So there's more ideas that I want to leave with you. This is the part that you can start doing immediately. And you do not have to, uh, and, you know, anywhere at any time for your dealership, not being a Pure Cars customer, just to benefit and to why for CPO. So we can mine your current, uh, or you should mine your current lease clients to build an audience for CPO targeting. What I mean is, like, get those pull-ahead programs started. These are your cars. You know they're well serviced. They would be perfect to certify. They're a great talking point, and it's easily able to both get someone into a new lease or a different purchase while obtaining the inventory that you need in order to get that CPO inventory. It just makes sense. The second is to pull credit challenge buyers to CPO. Retain the markup on the interest rates like new. When is the price point that's making the difference? The individual needs help on credit, but not so much because of the and the actual price point is just the issue is that monthly payments. Get them onto a CPO vehicle for the financing options where you can still retain that markup, which is more to the point of the profit that it can provide for you and your business. And then, of course, that's just going to lead to more opportunity to sell additional F&I products and build on why half of individuals choose CPO vehicles currently. You're just giving them more opportunity to really you know really offer what's being asked which is an extended warranty beyond the one year maybe yours is up to three years bumper to bumper or just gap insurance just more opportunity for products that can be sold and get that back in gross to really build up especially when we know we understand the market with its dwindling margins just ways that we can create and keep that profit um, and you know it really brings it home seeing the way in the full picture of all that place and that's what I want to leave you with for yourself and how these uh, CPO efforts are worth your time. But there, I did mention there's two things I wanted to leave with you that were from a pure cars perspective. Um, and I'll explain why for both. So one is that at pure cars, being a senior um, strategy manager, I apologize, um, there's really a lot of numbers and data. And that's not what Pure Cars is ultimately about. We're really about insights and action and, and measurement. And so this is just kind of an example description of something that I feel is what you're really after. And as a partner, would love to be able to, and what I use with my clients is that there is a line, right, of understanding Google search or just search interests versus knowing past purchase and vehicle sales and being able to map this. And so instead of just having this arbitrary feeling of like, what is my video doing? What is my Facebook doing? Should I put my money in search? Should it be towards the social efforts here? This is actually allowing us in this type of reporting style to know what kind of levers that are available and to take action on. So say we have a Cadillac XT5 and the sales that we are seeing are, are high and up in the six to 8%, but the demand or at least the search volume that we're seeing is about 2%. That tells me as an insight, what I can do and what my partners is say, search is not where we're gonna get more XT5s sold. 
It's going to be done through YouTube, display, segments, and bringing awareness, but directed and actionable awareness because we know for a fact in these areas segments, take Atlanta, uh, Tampa Bay, like targeted areas of segments, that we can take a look and actually know, do we need to have a demand problem? We're not generating enough demand to search to acquire? Or are we on the other side where I have a lot of demand for a certain model of Mercedes? It's minded, but ultimately insightful. That's usable. So I want to leave you with that. And then finally, digital e-tailing. We have a product that's called Value Intelligence. It sometimes gets pushed to the back with all the new features. And I really want to give it a highlight here because of what we just spoke on with less words and, and, and more value, more, more pictures. They're very intent on advertisements that, that bring less friction to the experience, right? I just told about Amazon and how important it was that they include everything that's insightful to about the product, to things you liked about the product, to maybe even reviews. But from this standpoint, this is the kind of product that when it hits your website, this is a value summary report. This is what you have spent, um, you know, actually putting the money into the vehicle to, to recondition it and get it out on the floor so they know that it has new brakes, low miles, Carfax. It's all graphical. It's easy to consume. It's mobile-minded first. It helps the sales floor deal with difficult questions like those tough pricing questions. If they have ease with showing the value, which is the high points of what they want in the vehicle in the first place, and then we also know, like you said, socially for Generation Z, back and forth, they want it to be easy um, and they're gonna be texting more than any other generation. You can instantly send value reports like this about your vehicle by text or email. And then you can instantly filter. I've heard way too many dealer phone calls where someone calls in and it goes a lot like this. I was looking at the red truck. Do you have a stock number? No, I don't have a stock number. Is it a 2018 or a 2019? Uh, it's, a, it's a red Silverado 1500 LT. I don't, I don't know. Do I need to go? Could you go on the site and find the number for me? I don't have that right now. Can I call you back? I was like, I've heard way too many phone calls like that. Instead, you can actually be equipped to be able to instantly start going in and knowing a red Silverado 1500 and start instantly naming off the inventory that you have. And it's across from your whole sales floor. Don't lose, a, don't lose an up because they didn't have the stock number to give you. This is all about reducing friction, especially in a world that is desiring it more and more. So that's where I'm gonna turn off uh, for Pure Cars. I don't know if there'll be any questions, anything that could be popping up or anything that's in the queue for me, um, but we really value, those are our things here at Pure Cars to take away and appreciate your time. I do see certified pre-owned sales as the future of really what's gonna be the answer to 2019, 2020, and especially for Generation Z. Uh, but they're all opening up to questions. And stop for a second. If we don't have any too, we'll be, we'll be done. I don't think we're gonna have any. So on that, I think we'll just go ahead and thank everybody for showing up, coming out. Uh, I know the information is, is useful. Please use it. Go ahead and apply it and then just reach out to us at Pure Cars if you have any additional questions on the things that I spoke on or you'd like to partner with us and uh, you know show you the way of the uh, digital automotive space with one of our other experts. All right, thank you.